All right. Well, howdy and welcome to our final virtual talk of our Campus Earth Month here at Texas A&M. Today, we're going to hear um, from two of our amazing interns, Vienna and Bella, and they're going to talk about veganism. So a few things before we get into the, to the thick of the presentation that I want to go over. First, uh, just for your own ease and convenience, it's always helpful to have your Zoom screen in side-by-side -side mode so that if there's any conversation in the chat, you can see it and it doesn't interfere with the screen. We do have the live transcript rolling. If you don't want that on, all you have to do is click the closed caption button and it will disappear. Also, really encourage you to think about questions as the presenters are talking. You can save those for the end and verbally ask them, or you can drop them in the chat as we go. But part of the fun thing about learning is being able to have a conversation with the folks that are doing the teaching. And um, that really helps with the enrichment of the entire experience. So I encourage you to think of and ask questions at the end. You might have noticed that we are recording today's video session. Also um, want to go a little bit over about some of the, the fun piece of Earth Month is that we do a really big grand prize uh, giveaway drawings and the way you're able to uh, maximize your opportunities to, to win and get your name pulled for one of those prizes is to collect code words. And for every event that we do, we give out different code words that you get to keep track of. When you attend live events, though, oops, wrong direction. When you attend live events, you get a little bit of a bonus. Number one, we'll have a, at least one code either spoken or somewhere on the PowerPoint that the, the students will share. But when you're here, with us today, you actually get four bonus code words. So when you attend live, you get five chances. That means your name goes into the big drawing five additional times. Keep track of all your code words that you're collecting throughout the entire month. So if you missed any of the earlier talks, you can find them on our YouTube channel at Sustainable Tamu, and you can watch that and get the code word and um, increase your chances that way. You can come out to any of our events. We'll be at Earth Day. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But all those code words help give you more opportunity to win. So you keep track of all of those and in one single email send to sustainabilityatamu.edu, the list of your code words, you do that by uh, before midnight on the 21st. And if you wanna find out the complete prize and detail rules, just so simply go to this website and you can learn more about how that is. Now, what do you have a chance to win? Well, we're gonna draw one tier one winner and you get to choose which of these prize. So if we draw your name, it could be that you want the Nintendo Switch or a Yeti cooler, or maybe you want a GoPro. I think last year, the, the grand prize winner, he selected the Ninja Professional uh, Blending System. We're going to get two Tier 2 winners, and your options include really great things that get you outside, like the, uh, the, the hammock, or you could have sustainable bath towels or an EcoFlip speaker. So you get to choose five Tier 3 winners, get to pick from things like uh, sustainable cleaning products, gardening tools, and you know the ever-popular Stanley Tumbler. So that's a little bit about the prizes. I do want to say before I turn it over that today's event is certified at the champion level. And that is because we have planned it to generate zero waste with that in mind. In fact, being on Zoom not only helps not generate waste by having us all together, but it also saves greenhouse gas emissions um, due to traveling. With that, I'm going to turn it, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll turn it over to our students. All right, let me go ahead and screen start screen sharing so uh hold on hello today we are uh sorry one, one second today our presentation is going to be about veganism question mark question mark there's a lot of we're gonna go a little bit more in depth about that so but first of all howdy uh my name is vienna chang I am a political science major and and I'm Bella Friel. Um, I'm a biology major. <laughs> and we are interns at the Office of Sustainability. So I just wanted to ask this to the audience first. What comes to mind when you hear the word veganism? So I don't know. You could type it in the chat. Uh, you can uh, let us know. Uh, I'm sorry. I, how do you try to figure out how to access the chat? Don't know, but yeah, if you yeah, if you want to type in the chat, we get a lot of we've gotten a lot of um feedback about what you, comes to mind when you hear the word veganism. We've heard positive things, negative things. Let's see, not eating animal products. Yeah, that's that's 
that's definitely yeah. that, that's the definition yeah. tofu. tofu yeah we, oh i bet vegans do probably eat a lot of tofu. no cheese it's quite no yeah. cheese can. honestly it is quite i honestly i don't know how they i don't know how you can give up cheese it's quite difficult i love cheese but yeah so like we've heard things like tree huggers um like i don't know in the good sense or a bad way both ways we've heard like being more sustainable vegetables yep and so we're here to talk a little bit more about that so vegans sometimes we have seen that maybe online you've noticed that like vegans can be really outspoken and trying to like guilt trip you to not eat animal products we've so sometimes we, we know like bad connotations can be associated with veganism but they're kind of right in a sense so the problem so some things about our uh, food production and some statistics is that food production is responsible for 26% of all of our greenhouse gas emissions. 50% of our ha all habitable land is utilized for agriculture. So half of all the land that we could be living on is going towards growing our food. 70% of freshwater withdrawals that, again, we could be using for other things are going towards global agriculture and um, not necessarily in the most sustainable ways. And agriculture causes about 78% of eutrophication in ocean and freshwater. And if you don't know what eutrophication is, basically it's when fertilizers from the fields will wash away with the rain, run into oceans and body other bodies of water, and that fertilizers will cause like algae to bloom. And when that algae all blooms like that, it turns the water green and murky, and it has a tendency to be really detrimental for um, natural habitats. So we see all these statistics and it's really, and it's almost, it feels like we can't do anything because it's, we're just one person. So it's just like, I don't know. What yeah. we can do with that. You might be thinking, what's the point? Um, these are just like huge numbers and you're like, what can my individual contribution do to combat this? But um, honestly, as individuals, like the choices we make about like the activities we do and like the resources we consume do have a big impact. And some people may think that like, if we just look at things from like our individual responsibility, um, then we might be distracted from like the things we can do to um, influence our government and uh, major institutions to make systematic change. But at the end of the day, the individual changes we make will lead to this larger social change. So it is important that we look at everything we can do. So, yeah, like Bella was saying, we have to, before we can implement big systematic change, you have to think about what you can do as an individual. So we've got compiled some things that everyone can try to try to eat more sustainably. So the goal of this presentation isn't necessarily to convert you all to veganism, even though, I mean, I'm sure it would be, I'm sure it would be a great thing, a great decision if you wanted to do that, but we're not here to shame anybody for eating meat. We're under, it's like, we understand, like, we, we live in Texas, you know, ranching is a big industry and it's not so easy to be able to just face animal products out of your diet entirely. So our goal here is just to make sure to enlighten you on some things to do to uh, minimize your own carbon footprint in the food that you eat. So some things that everyone can try, meatless Mondays. If you were, we're going to go more into depth about all of these things that we're bringing up in the later slides. So some things you can try, meatless Mondays, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you can buy produce in season, again, uh, and also eating less impactful meat. And we will go more in depth on those. Yeah, so Meatless Monday is a global movement that just encourages people to reduce meat in their diet for their health and health of their of the planet. Um, and this campaign was started in 2003 in association with the Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future. So um, they believe that eating less meat will help reduce the incidence of chronic preventable diseases, preserve precious land and water resources, and combat climate change. So Meatless Monday's simple message to just skip meat once a week um, provides a regular cue to action on Monday, the first day of the week, which can, study show can um, like set the tone for the things that you eat in the rest of your week. Um, and so if we think about it, if the US population is about 30 million, 30, oh my gosh, sorry, 330 million people. Um, and if all of us didn't eat meat, 
for one day out of the week, our three meals a day, that would equal almost a billion plant forward meals a week. And this could have drastic impacts on combating the resource depletion that's caused by animal farming and ranching because we could be less dependent on these practices. And this goes right back to our point about how the individual responsibility that you choose to take um, can create wide scale change. So another thing that we mentioned before, what can I buy? Some things that you can always think about when you're purchasing food for like, I don't know, grocery shopping or things like that. You always want to try to source your food locally. And the thing that I mentioned previously where you buy produce in season is also extremely important. So what mostly I'll focus on here, Go Texan is a is a brand or not brand. It's a it's going to, that logo is going to be on certain products in HEB that uh, when HEB sources them from local vendors, I, I we love HEB here. I don't know about you guys, but I like to do all my grocery shopping at HEB and HEB does take pride in helping out its local, um, its local economies and stuff. So if you ever go grocery shopping, you're thinking about buying something and one of them's got the GoTexan label on it, I would say go for it because that means that it's coming from an area near you and that reduces your carbon footprint by reducing the amount of transportation that you need. And also it helps support your local economies. And um, another thing that you could do here in the uh, BCS area is we have a farmer's market. And uh, again, farmer's markets are great because you know where your food is coming from. I would honestly say that that's probably one of the best ways that you could uh, try to reduce your own impact is when you're aware of where your food is coming from and you know that it's like it's coming from somewhere near you. So then you can help support, you know, everyone around you to support uh, your your local communities. Every, uh, probably a lot of places have farmer's markets. So even if you didn't want to go to the farmer's market here in Brazos County, you could always just uh, if you've got one back home, I would highly suggest you guys look that up. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And you get to meet with a lot of interesting people. So another thing that the previous thing I mentioned with the seasonal produce is that so food, you know, comes into season at different times, certain foods, certain like vegetables and fruits become ripe at different times of the year. And if you can figure out like, or not figure out, if you know when certain foods become ripe, it's best to buy them at that time. So for example, as of right now, we're approaching summer and you're about to see a whole bunch of watermelon in the grocery store. You wouldn't want to really buy watermelon in the winter time because it probably wouldn't taste as good and it's a little bit more expensive. But now that watermelon's coming in season, it's a little bit cheaper and it tastes better. So if you would like, you could screenshot this. Um, you can screenshot this this picture that we've got on the slide. It's just a little bit of a guide to let you know what's becoming what becomes in season at what time. So yeah, right now we're in the border between like spring and summer ish and. Uh, if you buy things in season, you also get the added benefit. It is a little bit cheaper because they don't have to uh, they don't have to source it from as far and you don't have to worry about the transportation costs of wherever they're getting it from. And the last thing is, is that this doesn't this is not just applicable to vegetables. This is also definitely applicable to meat. Of course, we're not trying to tell anyone to stop eating me, I mean, it's encouraged to it's encouraged to just think more about your environmental impact. And the best thing that you can do if you're not quite willing to give up, you know, a good steak, maybe see if you could buy it from the uh, from a local rancher or just making sure that you're getting your meat some from somewhere nearby or somewhere that's growing it properly. And yeah, so we want to expand on eating foods with less impact. So just as Vienna was saying, um, we don't expect everyone to just watch this and instantly become vegan. It's just not, um, I don't know. And <laughs> yeah, it's not feasible. Thank you. <laughs> um, especially in the state of Texas at Texas A&M, like our economy depends so much on ranching and agriculture and these things. But um, we want to take the handy slogan from our adorable Chick-fil-A cows, eat more chicken, um, to talk about how you can eat meats with less impact that will create um, a better environment for everybody. So um, eating chicken and other meats instead of dark meats like beef um, and pork actually are more sustainable. Um, according to a study by Tulane University, um, if Americans swapped one serving of beef for, per day for chicken, their diet's greenhouse gas emissions would fall by an average of 48 percent and water use impact by 30 percent. So you can almost cut your greenhouse gas emissions in half 
from your diet if you just choose a different meat. And additionally, another animal product that a lot of people like to talk about is milk. So um, dairy milk consumption has actually been decreasing like over the last 70 years. And our generation is consuming about 550% more plant-based milk than previous generations. And a lot of people have just stopped drinking cow's milk in as a beverage or adding it to cereal, but a way that we really see it um, keeping used is in coffee and tea. But a great thing that a lot of coffee chains like Dutch Bros, Starbucks, um, and local coffee shops like Sweet Eugene's do is offer a bunch of plant-based milks. Um, this could be oat milk, soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, and you can see from the graph like the different impacts that each of these things has on emissions, land usage, and water usage. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind, and it's really awesome how accessible this is because you can go to almost any coffee shop and get a dairy milk alternative. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, the, or not finally, but the moment I'm sure you've been waiting for, the code word is hummus. hummus. <laughs> you can like write that down somewhere. Hummus, it's a vegan snack that is really good for you. And I would say tastes pretty awesome. And you can buy it with the GoTexan label at HEB. And this post is not sponsored by hummus, just as a disclaimer. And we just both really like eating hummus. So your code word is hummus. If you've got that written down somewhere. And we can also, now we're moving into how vegan, how going vegan can also be healthy for you. So we've talked a lot about environmental sustainability, but we also want to touch, make sure that we touch on self-sustainability or your health, because of course, sustainable just means that you want to make something last for a long time. And you want to make sure that you're, that you're keeping your body at its tip, at like good shape and that you're making sure you're feeding, you're feeding yourself good things. Well, going vegan can be healthy. And here's some things that to that uh, that can help with that. So lower cholesterol. So cutting back on your meat consumption and animal animal product consumption can help lower your cholesterol. Uh, it can help reduce it reduces the risk of chronic health illnesses. It can help you lower your blood pressure, and because uh, vegetables and whole grains have a tendency to help lower blood pressure as opposed to other things that can help like you know raise it. If you're being more conscious about what you're eating, then your blood, then it, um, it usually helps out with that. And Bella is going to talk about this one. Yes. So going vegan can actually help improve your cardiovascular health. Um, and one thing I want to discuss is this omnivore versus vegan twin study that I found. And um, so the study chronicles the effects of eating a vegan diet versus an omnivore diet on identical twins, which um, controls for a lot of like confounding variables since so many things are similar between the chin twins genetics and everything. Um, and so the results of the study indicate that there's abundant evidence to suggest that vegan diets are associated with improved cardiovascular health and decreased risk of, risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, the quality of the diets was controlled both twins were offered a healthy diet, like whether containing meat and animal products or just a purely vegan diet. And um, at the end of the study, they found that the vegan diet that the twin, the one twin had um, led to significant decreases in low density lipoprotein cholesterol concentration, uh, fa lower fasting insulin level and decreased body weight. So yeah, if you're not necessarily interested in going vegan because of environmental reasons, uh, perhaps you might be better if you would like to think more about your health. It's just an option for you. But yes, thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We would like to leave you with this last little bit of no judge. We're not here for any judgment. We're not here to shame anybody for their food choices. We just want to emphasize the fact that as individuals, we have power over our own lives. And as a, if we all decide to do this together as like individuals, we have power as a collective. So make these good decisions, do it. Uh, and here are our sources. If you are interested in learning a bit more about what we, uh, what we touched on in the presentation. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks and gig them. Gig them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Vienna and Bella. Uh, really learned some things myself um, going through your talk and really appreciate you doing that. That I would, again, so now we're at the Q&A portion 
of our time together this morning. If you have a question, you're certainly welcome to just unmute yourself and ask. You could also just drop it in the chat. And while I'm waiting for you all to come up with some really great questions for our presenters here today, I'm going to ask my own. So, you know, th this topic is an interesting one that many students have discussed over the years, but I'm always curious. So why did you two decide to talk about veganism? Yeah, um, I can start off. So as a biology major, I'm really interested in like the science of life and everything um, and like how it corresponds with sustainability. And like one of the things that really did um, stick out to me were the health benefits. Like I think it's something that you can't ignore, like how good it is for you to eat less red meat and eat more um, vegetables and fruits and things that are high in fiber. All right. And yeah, so for me personally, it was more about the environmental impacts of of, of um, eating meats and stuff. It was something that I had become more aware of starting around middle school when I was realizing how dairy milk was versus almond and soy milk was changing. So it was just nice to be able to talk a little bit more about that. All right. All right. So we, you, we do have a couple of questions in the chat if you saw the first one. Um, and you can stop screen sharing, Vanna, if you want. That way we can oh, actually okay. see y'all. Um, the, the first question I saw, um, how do you get enough protein if you go vegan? All right. So, um, vegan, it's getting meat as, I mean, getting protein as a vegan is definitely something that I've seen a lot. It's a challenge for a couple of vegans, but there's always, um, to be recommend beans is a really good protein substitute and, uh, believe also, yeah, a lot of, uh, legumes will have like different kinds of like legumes will have a proteins in them. It's always, but you've just got to, yeah, you do have to be more mindful that you eat more of those products that will have protein in them. That's not necessarily meat. So um, I believe that was, that's how most vegans do get their protein is by eating a lot of different variations of like beans. So maybe if you're not too into beans, it might be a little bit more of a challenge for you, but I've saw some ways that people cook them and they look pretty tasty. So yeah. And like eating tofu and different things like that as well. Um, and it, it is important to note that like you do have to be conscious of the diet that you create if you turn vegan because you can't just go and eat meat to get protein. You have to like have a proper healthy vegan diet. Um, yeah, Oreos are vegan. So you wouldn't just want to eat a whole lot of Oreos all the time. Right. <laughs> I think like Oreos, Reese's Puffs, like and if you just live off that. It's not <laughs> great for your body. Right. <laughs> great for you. Right. Ooh, it tastes good, but not great for you. There's a, another question here. Um, can you explain a little bit more about why eating meats like chicken is better environmentally than eating dark meat or I'd say red meats? All right. So I can talk a little bit more about that. So eating meats like chicken, uh, chicken versus, let's say, dark meats like uh, redder meats. Redder meats tend to have tend to need a lot more land usage. <clears throat> sorry, my, my throat is clear. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. You need a lot more land in order to um, raise a pound of beef versus, say, like a pound of chicken, just because it's um, the amount of land that they need to graze on. Sorry, give me one second. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's going on. Anyways, so they also require a lot more water and um, you need to grow a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more grass intensive, a lot more. You need um, you need to grow feed for them. The main reason why meat is take so much water this isn't necessarily because of like how much the how much the actual animal itself is drinking. It's more so about how much water it took to grow all the crops it took to feed that all the um, all the crops it took to feed the, the animal, because that's a whole other um, that's like a whole other time set, basically, like there's a lot that goes into making that goes into making a pound of beef versus a pound of chicken, just because chicken is a little bit more it's you can you can grow it and not grow it, grow them in a little bit uh, smaller spaces and they don't require as much uh, as as much crops as it takes to feed a cow. So, yeah, that's a little bit more about it. But again, if you are lo local sources of beef and other like heavy red intensive like meats isn't necessarily as bad for the environment as if you like shift it over way way overseas so again it's just always about what you're eating and making sure you're choosing the right making good choices for yourself and let's see what else do we have i see one question about any vegan beauty products so um 
I know milk makeup and their skincare products are vegan, as well as Rare Beauty. Um, and another brand, Essence Beauty, um, which is very affordable. 70% of their v products are vegan certified. It's better. Yeah. Those are some <clears throat> it's good pretty option. good. Great product. Yes, I do believe lentils are an option for protein if you are going to, if you would like to try going vegan and you're trying to get more protein in your diet. Yeah, lentils are a great option for that. And yeah, I have not seen that documentary, but I, I should add it to my to my to be watched list. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all for um, putting the, the questions in the topic. Uh, I mean, brought out some points I didn't I didn't know about the makeup. So um, and it's always good to get another documentary added to our list. Uh, thank you, Vienna and Bella. I've got a couple more things before we sign off. I did drop those code words in the chat, so make sure you snag those. And let's see here. We already talked about that. I, you know, if you're interested in becoming an intern in the Office of Sustainability, our applications are open. Every uh, major is eligible to be part of this, and not just eligible. We really encourage students from every single major on campus to be uh, an intern in the office. Those applications are due April 21st, 11.59 p.m. Coincidentally, that is the same time all of your code words are due. So applications are due at, at the same email, sustainability.tamu, I'm sorry, sustainability at tamu.edu, where you would also send your email with all of your code words. Lastly, I just want to point out that our next big event where you can not only get a code word, but you can get one of our uh, beat the hell out of climate change t-shirts is going to be at Rudder Plaza on Wednesday, next Wednesday, April 17th from 10 to 1. And if you come out there around 11, you're going to get to see a guest. Reveille will be there and you can take photos with the Queen of Aguilan. That's all we have for today. We appreciate you joining us. Happy Earth Month.